Hey, bless the bless the everybody. Welcome, welcome once again. Uh, well, today we are still answering people's question. Uh, many of you have asked, uh, what is the meaning of the narrow door and the wide door? Uh, because I said something very important that uh, few people will go to hell, many people will go to heaven. Because Jesus is not a fool to die for us. He's not a fool to die in the cross and the devil to draw more people in hell. Jesus will draw more people. More people will go to heaven than those who will go to hell. Now, why? Why am I saying this? Then some of you asked some questions. You said, okay, what about the narrow door and wide door? What does it mean? Jesus says many, pe many people will go to hell. Now, let us find out what does the narrow door and wide door mean. Now, it's not what you think mostly, so I would love you to have patience and listen with a mind to comprehend. Because, you see, this parable is found in Matthew chapter 7 and in Luke chapter 13. In Matthew chapter 7, it's talking about a different thing. And in Luke chapter 13, it's talking about a different thing. It's not talking the same thing. So it's bad if you compare the two parables in different passages. But let's start with Matthew chapter 7. I will start with Matthew chapter 7 and look what does it mean. Now, if you are there, you can take your Bible and open Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, verse uh, the parable of the wide and the narrow gate. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13. Now, listen, what does the Bible say? The Bible says, I read in the name of Jesus, Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and the broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. 14. Because straight is the gate, straight is narrow, narrow is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Now Jesus says, make every effort to enter through the narrow door. Because the wide door is so wide and many people go through it. And that leads to destruction. But says, but enter through the narrow gate. Because it leads to life. But if you find it. Now, if you read this, this passage, you will think that Jesus is saying that many people will go to hell. Many people, they go to hell easily. And the small people go to heaven. Before you begin, let me tell you, never assume. When a man dies, never assume that they have gone to hell. Never assume. Because you don't know what happens on the deathbed. Maybe the, the person met the Lord on the deathbed. Or someone preached to him on the deathbed. Or he called or he, he asked Jesus to help him and save him on the deathbed. Maybe the drunkard, the post, a prostitute, an alcoholic, a criminal who just died. Never assume that they have gone to hell. Because you don't know what happened before they gave their last breath. I remember one story, uh, a, a certain lady, a certain lady, her father was an unbeliever. She tried to preach to the father. The father refused to accept the gospel. Then some days ago, the father died. Then she came crying. She was crying. She's like, my father went there. She was crying. So when she was in the hospital, she was weeping and mourning. And the man said, why are you crying? Then she said, I'm crying because my father died without knowing Jesus. He is going to hell. She says, hey, daughter, hold on. I preached to your father. Before he died, he had peace. But you see, she thought that the father had gone to hell because he was a sinner. He never re received the gospel. But she never knew that the father has received the gospel at the last moment. So you should never conclude about someone's life that they've gone to hell or heaven when they die because you don't know what has happened. Many people, some they receive Jesus on the deathbed, some they hear the gospel on the deathbed, some when they are on the deathbed they say, Lord, help me, and the Lord saves them. Because you know what? The Lord wills that every man should be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. That is the desire, the passion, the passion of God. It's the bottom heart, the desire of God. What God loves is to save. And the Bible says, when a man shall call unto the name of the Lord Jesus, he shall be saved. When a man says, Lord, save me, Jesus, I need you, immediately Jesus comes. Jesus will not look, have you been a good person? Have you stopped smoking? Have you stopped prostitution? The Lord just comes that way because the Lord needs you that way. You come to him as you are and he will make you into his own vessel. So Jesus does not look, what, have you tried to be holy? He comes to you immediately. So never conclude. So if you read Matthew chapter 7, you think that Jesus says many people will go to hell. 
because the Broadway and they are going to distraction. But I want to show you that be careful. Never interpret scripture out of context. Now, when you read Matthew chapter 7, verse 13, it says, narrow door, is, it leads to life. The broad way, it leads to destruction. And many people go in the way of destruction. But I want to show you what is the context saying here. Now, let's go. Let me read it for you again in verse 13. Enter ye into the narrow door. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go thereat. Now look at verse 14. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth to life, and few there be find it. Okay? Now let's see what is the context. Let's read. Don't finish there. Let's continue. Verse 15. Be aware of false prophets. Do you see that? Be aware of false prophets. So what is the discussion? <laughs> be aware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly they are ravening wolves ye shall know them by their fruits do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles even so every good fruit uh, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit do you see that neither can a corrupted tree bring forth good fruit 19 Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of the Father, shall, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Have we not cast out devils in thy name and done so many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me. Ye that work iniquity. Now, when you read again this, you think that Jesus says, you know, some Christians who say, Lord, Lord, will not make it to heaven. You know, because Jesus says, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who do the will of God. Now, wait. You see the danger of explaining the scripture. I don't have time to explain this, but let me go through it. When Jesus says uh, that, uh, when Jesus is saying here, he says, you know, false prophets, be aware of these false prophets. Then he continues to say, that they shall come to me saying, Lord, have we not done signs and wonders? And I shall say, I never knew you. Now, this people is talking about, he's not talking about, unbel uh, about believers. He's talking about false prophets. He's talking about false Christians who just came to church as a pretense, to pretend like they are a member of the church. They love the affiliation, you know, they love the groups, they love the comfort, they love being there with believers, they enjoy the privilege of the relationship there. They are just there to be branded, to feel good, you know. Some they just come because they feel going to church will prevent them from going to hell, but they have not come looking for Jesus. Some they have come for miracles, they are looking, I need healing, I need financial breakthrough. Every year is breakthrough, breakthrough. The last month was breakthrough. This month is breakthrough. When are you going to breakthrough? You continue to look after breakthrough, never arriving. Some they came, you know, I need to get that billion dollar. I want to be a millionaire. They are not there to seek after Jesus. That's their first prophet. They are first Christ. They are first Christians. They are first brethren. And Jesus says, I will say to them, I never knew you. Not a believer. A believer, the believer, the Bible says, a believer is in Christ, is joined with Christ. So Jesus cannot say, I never knew you. Because the, Jesus says the believer that your names are written in the book of life. So Jesus cannot say, I never knew you because a believer is known by Christ. He's born of God. He's born of Jesus. So if Jesus says, I know, I don't know you, then it's a lie. The people he's talking about, they are false prophets. They are false Christians. They are those who never believed in Jesus. They are just there in church for their agendas. They are there to a sister. They are looking for a sister to marry. They are, there. they are not looking for Christ. They are going to church. I, you know, that sister, she's a Christian. If I be a Christian, maybe she will accept me too. That's what he will say to them. I never knew you. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. Believers are not workers of iniquity. Believers are the righteousness of God in Christ. Hallelujah. In Christ. Glory be to God. So let me just stop there. And but but you know, let, let me finish it. Let me finish it. Let me finish it. But Jesus says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but them that do the will of God. Now, what is the will of God? I don't have time to go through this, but let me just go through it small time. Mm -hmm. The will of God is that when you read the Bible in uh First Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 to 4, the Bible says that this is the will of God to have all men saved. 
and to come to the knowledge of the truth. And Peter says that God's not slack concerning that which he promised because he is so long suffering, desiring that no man should perish, but all should come to repentance. That's the reason Jesus died. Jesus died because he needs all men to be saved. Now, the will of God is that men should be saved. Now, he that does the will of God is that he will receive the gospel. He who believes he has done the will of God. Doing the will of God does not mean. That's why, you know, many Christians spend all their lives praying, you know, I need to see the will of God. When the will of God is Christ and the will of God is salvation, when you receive Christ, the will of God is fulfilled in you. When you receive the salvation, the will of God is done. You have fui command the bradido sauce. The will of God is fulfilled in you. That's it. So dom which dante kibo comba de brosi da bahada. Them that do with the will of God, these they are the people who have received Jesus because that's the will of God that men should be saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So them that do the will of God are they which receive the gospel, believe in Jesus, put their faith on Jesus, and get saved. And God redeems them, resurrects them from death. But those who are not saved, these are the people who say to them, I don't know you. Thank you so much. So let me just stop there. Let me just stop there. Let's continue with our topic, right? So we're just saying about Romans. Now, you see, Jesus begins to say about the narrow door, the wide door. But when you come in verse 14, he says, be aware of false prophets. So that means for us to understand what he's saying about the narrow door, we should connect this to the false prophets. Hallelujah. So now, that means when Jesus says, Many shall go through the wide door, but few through the narrow door. He's not talking about heaven. He's not saying many will go to hell, to hell, few will go to heaven. He's talking about deception. Deception. But le let me bring something to your, to your understanding. Let me show you something. He is talking about deception. Now, let's go to Matthew chapter 24. Let me show you why. Matthew chapter 24 verse 11 deception remember he's not talking about going to hell or heaven he's talking about deception matthew chapter 24 verse 11 what does the bible say the bible says and many prophets shall arise and they shall deceive many do you see that many prof many false prophets they shall rise and they shall deceive many they shall deceive many so when jesus says Few people find the way to the life. Many find the way to destruction. What he's saying is saying about deception that false prophets will arise. They will rise and they will lead many to destruction. Now that destruction does not mean uh, that you know because believers can be deceived. Right now there are believers who have been deceived. For example, those who observe the Sabbath, they are deceived. Those who pray to Holy Mary, they are deceived. You see that? But you know, believers, they can be saved but deceived. So we will need to look again. What is the distraction? Is the distraction hell or something? So first, put it in your mind. When Jesus says the wide door, the narrow door, we should continue to read. We should read and find out that he says about false prophets. So when Jesus says many shall find the, the way to destruction, he's talking about these false prophets arising and leading many to heresies, into destruction heresies, into many distractions, but few will find the way into the narrow door. This is the true gospel. These are the people who hear the true message of Jesus. It's just like these days. These last days, only few people are preaching the right gospel. Many, they are preaching heresies. That's why, you know, when we arise, we say that salvation is of God. There is no way. Salvation is eternal. Many people, they don't. That's why, you know, some they are in church from January to December is, you know, how to kill witches, how to round off wizards, how to prosper, how to establish business, how to marriage panadol, marriage panadol. They never hear Jesus. The only time they hear Jesus is when they are praying, Jesus, Jesus, and when they are trying to cast out devils. That's the only time. You will never hear them preach Jesus except on, on Christmas and on, or, and on Passover. They, you will never hear them preach Jesus. They are in those churches where you, you learn about tactics to improve your businesses. Three tips to prosperity, levels of success, dangerous prayers, 
how I arrested witch, witches in my village. Those are the messages that people are listening to. And they are the, the heresies. And now when they hear the true message, they don't want to accept it. Why? Because they say, you know, how come this man is the only one preaching this? You know, 90% of the people do not agree with him. It doesn't come with popularity. The gospel, it doesn't come with popularity, but with integrity. Let me show you something. When Peter entered into ministry, when they, after Jesus resurrected, you realize Peter entered into heresies. Peter began to preach another gospel. He began to preach that for you to be saved, you need to be saved, but keep the law of Moses and be circumcised, which is the first gospel. But you know, a man arose by the name of Paul and Barnabas, and they gathered in, Je in, in it was in, in Acts chapter 15, in the council of Jerusalem. They gathered and they discussed. They debated so much that a man is either saved by grace and not by the law. And at the end, they agreed with Paul. But you know, it was Paul only and the Barnabas who were defending the true message, saying that Jesus has died for us. We do not need the law. We do not need to be circumcised. There were only two. So popularity does not define the truth. If you find that men are preaching that, does not mean it's the truth. And Peter, it took some time for him to transition. Actually, Peter had to even sit under the mentorship of of Paul. He had to be humble enough. Just many men of God, they are not humble. Peter had to humble himself. The bishop himself had to humble himself to be taught by Paul and be shown. That's why he said, these are the things which Paul have wrote to you. So hard to comprehend that many people do not comprehend this. They lead themselves into distraction. Peter acknowledged himself that what Paul is teaching is very hard. Do you see that? So th this is what we are dealing with. In these last days, there are multiplicity of false doctrines going all over the world. And many people, they have been led astray. Many people, millions, they have led astray thinking that we need Mary to pray on our behalf. Every time they they never use the name of Jesus. Hail Mary, hail Mary. Many they have been derailed to think that, you know, you need the Sabbath for salvation. Many even have teach that you need to be baptized to be saved. And if you are baptized once, and you sin, you need to come again and be baptized the second time. That's deception. Deception. That's what Jesus is talking about. Many shall find a way to destruction because this is the work of false prophets leading men astray. But few shall find the way to life. Right. Now, let, but let me show you something. So we read Matthew chapter 24 verse 11 which says, Many prophets will arise and they shall lead many into destruction. They shall lead many astray. So the leading away, that's what we want to see, and the distraction. Hallelujah. Then after that, we look at another one. Let's go to second. Uh, no, let's start from Second Peter chapter two verse one. If you have your Bible, just open it and read it. Or if you have it, you are quicker than me. You can open it and uh, just type it there so that I can read it for me and so it can save me time. Second Peter chapter two verse one. This is what the Bible says. <laughs> but there were false prophets also among you. Even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. It says there are pro false prophets among you, and there shall be false prophets in the world to come, in this time, in our generations. And says, these false prophets, they shall rise all over the world. And they shall teach damnable heresies. Even denying the Lord that bought them. They shall deny the Lord. They shall deny the Lord that bought them. And bring upon themselves swift destruction. See that? Wide is the gate and many people enter into the wide gate. That leads to destruction. This is heresies which they preach damnable heresies and they shall bring upon themselves destruction oh ho, ho. let's go to second let's go to first timothy chapter 6 verse 10 first timothy chapter 6 verse 10 if you have your bible make sure you note it down and if you are very quick to 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 type it please type it so it can save me time first timothy 
chapter 6 verse 10. Here he is. For the love of money is the root of all evils, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith, and they have pierced themselves with many sorrows. Ah, Zadaka Bobo no brothers. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. Ah, thank you, Jesus. First Timothy chapter six. Let me let me read it for you here. In uh in verse 2. Let's start from verse 2. And they shall, okay, let's start from verse 1. This is very interesting. Let as many servants as are under the yoke of the count their own masters worth of all honor, that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. The name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. 2. And they, sh and they that have believing masters, let them not despise them. Because they are brethren, but rather do them service, because they are faithful and beloved, partakers of the of the benefit. These things teach and exhort. Now follow the thought. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wash some words, the word wash some words is hogaino, which means healthy. Wash some words, even the words of our Lord Jesus. And to the doctrine which is according to godliness. So you need to pay attention because it says, if anyone teaches, otherwise from which I'm, I'm about to say. So Paul is saying, if anyone you will see is teaching anything apart from this I'm about to say, pay attention. If anyone teach otherwise and consent not to what some doctrine, what some words, health words, haha. <laughs> Even the words of our Lord Jesus, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. Now pay attention, verse 4. He is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and the strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strifes, raring, evil surmising. Saying, If any man preaches apart from what? Apart from this I have said, and preaches this I'm about to say, this man is proud. Not knowing anything, destitute of the truth, vain babblers. <laughs> ah, ha, 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 ha. Look at verse 5. Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, reprobates, <laughs> and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. <laughs> From such withdraw thyself. So it says, if any man you see, He's preaching godliness as a means of gain. $91 for 91 blessings. You know, the seed you put down on your altar, on your sacrifice, determines the level of the blessings. You know, you need to give God money so you can, you can be blessed. Those, they are the, those people are proud, knowing nothing, doting about questions, strifes of words, perverse deputings, they are corrupted in their minds. This is the Bible. It's not me saying I mean, Paul used this very strong words, very strong words. Do you find the way they are saying, you know, your tithe, if you, if you are suffering, you need to check your offering. If your pocket is tight, you need to check your tithe. If it is too tight, you need to look how much you give thanksgiving. Because if you don't thank God, your thank will not be full. That's a doctrine of devil and seducing spirits. And Paul says, these men, they are proud, not knowing anything, evil surmising, strifes, Perverse disputings, they are corrupted in their minds. But godliness with contentment is, God, is great gain. So Paul is saying, anyone you find is preaching prosperity, you know, prosperity, you need to give God 21, you know, 100 to, now 2021 came, I believe some were saying, you know, you need to show $2,021 to claim all the blessings of 2021. September to remember. This is the nine months. You need to show a special seed to say, Lord, this September, remember me. Those they are the doctrine of devils. Any gospel which teaches to you that money is a form of godliness, that when you see, the, the to see how God blesses you, you should look at money. That to see how your relationship with God is okay, you should look at how much prosperous you are. It's a doctrine of devils with horns. But Paul says, godliness with contentment is a great gain. Hmm. For we bought nothing to this world, and it is certain we carry nothing. Hallelujah. 
So do you, do, do, do you see what I'm, I'm, I'm saying here? For the love of money is the root of man, is the root of all evil. But let's go to, to verse 9. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and the snare, and into many foolish and heartfulness, which drown men in destruction and perdition. When you preach to men, you know, God blesses you. You need to give God so that, so that he can bless you. You know, God sent me to raise millionaires. millionaires. That's doctrine of devils. And Paul says this one does not lead to contentment. It teaches you another gospel. And Paul says something here in verse 9. He says, into many foolish heartful lusts, you will fall into temptation, which will draw you into distraction and perdition. Distraction, aim from faith. Distraction, piercing yourself with many sorrows, because the riches of this world have many sorrows. But the riches of God will mm -hmm. have no sorrows. Glory be to God. For the love of money, verse 10, is the root of all evils, which while some converted after, they have erred from the faith. Because now people, they are hearing prosperity gospel. You need to give God money so you can, you know, the, the level of blessing determines the level of giving. You know, you cannot give God and not be blessed. Now people, it, they have become greed. They have become covetous. They are looking for money. They are looking for just, I need a car. I need this. They are then in the church not because of the gospel, not because they want Jesus. It's because they are looking for things. And Paul says, the, the man is the root of all evils. Which many have coveted after because of the gospel of prosperity. They have coveted and developed greed. And they have erred from faith. Now, erring from faith does not mean losing salvation. It means faith, the, it means the true gospel, sound doctrine. Erring from faith means going from sound doctrine into preaching heresies. They've erred from faith. Now, many men of God, because they enter ministry because they want money, they want people to eat, they want to eat title of people, you know, they, they want, you know, to drive Lamborghinis, to wear expensive suits. Many men of God, they stand in front, you know, they say, you know, you know this suit, I brought it $2,000. You know, I have private jets, I'm very rich. I have cars, you know, this Gucci shoe, I bought it $5,000. I'm not cheap, you know, and they are eating the money of the church. And now, because they are there in the ministry, not to bring souls to Christ, but they are there for money, to show off their riches, they are there to show off how, how, how prosperous they are. That's why they preach to you that you need to give tithe to be blessed. That's why they preach to you that you need to give first fruit to be blessed. First fruit is nonsense. First fruit does not mean the Bible never says you should give first fruit. All right. First fruit means Jesus is our first fruit, is our resurrection. He's the resurrected, is the first fruit, the first born from the dead. That's what he's saying. You know, if you give first fruit, God is, will bless. No, God blessed you before you gave money. And before even you wake up, you realize you blessed. God already blessed you. And he does not need you to do anything. He blessed you while you were yet a sinner, while you were yet dead. Before even you gave that small money of yours, God blessed you. How much money do you think you can buy the blessing of God? God blessed you before anything. That's why the Bible says, Blessed be our Lord, our God, the Father of our Lord, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. God has already blessed you with all spiritual blessings. It's not your money that can merit you, qualify you for the blessings of God. The blessings of God, they are gifts that are given for free and they are bound to everyone. God blesses every man freely. He does not charge man. How do you think that God needs your money? There is no building God is in heaven. There is no bank in heaven. God does not need your money. Your money is needed here. Am I saying you should stop giving to church? No. When you get born again, there is a responsibility on you now to push forward the gospel of God, to support the ministry of Jesus. So you give responding to the love of God. You give thanking God. You know, you look at what Jesus has done. You say, Lord, I cannot repay you but from my heart, I say thank you. And because I have received this love of God, Lord, I use my money, I use my resources to make the gospel known to people so that them too, they can receive this love that I have found. So you give as a responsible child of God, responding to the love of God, not expecting anything in return. Because God does not give you money. God gives you salvation. 
So because now many people, they are greedy. They are departed. They are false prophets with false messengers. They have now manipulated the gospel to suit them. And they have called it prosperity gospel. And they have inserted it in the Bible, trying to support it with the scriptures. And they have erred from faith. So, hallelujah. And now, what does it say? They have drawn themselves to destruction. They have erred from faith. And they pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Do you see that? Now open your Bible in Jude chapter 1 verse 11. We are looking at the narrow, the narrow door. And I said the, the wide door means heresies, false teachers, leading men astray. The narrow door means those who have pay heed, those who continue to stay under, listening to the true gospel. Those they have entered the narrow door. It's not meaning going to heaven, right? Because remember, a Christian can be deceived, but he will not lose heaven. Yes, there are many Christians. Who are deceived, yet they are born again. They are deceived. That's why they, they are deceived. All right. So I hope you get that. I just want to do something. I don't want to say something. Mm -hmm. All right. Open your Bible in Jude chapter one verse eleven. If you are already there, please you can open for us and read it, or you can type it there. Jude chapter one verse eleven. All right. This is what the Bible says. Woe unto them, <laughs> woe unto them, for they have gone into the way of Cain, and they ran greedily after the heir of Balaam, for reward, and they perished in the gainsaying of God. Woe unto them, they have entered the way of Cain. Now what is the way of Cain? The way of Cain is trying to please God. Based on your works, is coming to God, you know. Lord, you know, I tithe every day. Lord, you know, I give my money. Lord, you know, I'm faithful. God cannot stop me to bless me because I'm faithful. Lord, oh, look at me, Lord. Just like the Pharisee. Lord, I am not like that tax collector. That tax collector is a sinner. I fast twice every day. I give tithe every day. Look at that hypocrite. You, you fast twice a day and you think it is a big deal? My friend, why not fast seven days in the week? I give tithe 10%. That's too small. Why not give 99%? 90%. Yet you think the 10% qualifies you before God. The way of kind. Thinking that your effort will qualify you. Now, into the way again of Balaam for reward. Balaam for reward. For reward. For greed. For money. They are into ministry. In the way of Balaam. Because their focus is not Jesus. Their focus is money. But they have perished in the gainsaying of God. They've perished. Hmm. Hey, yeah, yeah. They've perished. Keep it simple. Now, let's go now to Matthew. Uh, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. If you, if you are very fast, please type it there so that you can save us time. Ah, oh, thank you, Jesus. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. If you are there, please, you can type it for us. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. All right, I found it. Here it says, For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. It means anathema, cut him off. Hmm. Hey, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, that your word is coming hot. Your word is a lamp unto our path. Now, look, he says, if any man comes, preaches another Jesus, another spirit, another gospel. Now, the fact you enter into a church, you find there is, they are saying, shout fire, fire, fire. And people, they are falling, they are vomiting on the ground. It's not a proof. That God is there. Because there is another Jesus, there is another spirit, and there is another gospel. Another Jesus, another spirit. Now, let me clarify something. Many people ask like, okay, what is the demonstration of the power of God? The demonstration of the power of God. Is it not when people fall? Let me say this. Yes, sometimes the power of God can overwhelm you. To the extent that you lose control of your body, and you cannot but give up. You see that? 
But it's never the when you see people falling, it's not the proof that is the fall of God. Why am I saying this? Why am I saying that when people fall, it's not the power of God? Then what is the demonstration of the power of God? Now let me show you the two demonstrations of the power of God. Romans chapter 1, verse 16, Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to all who believe. So the gospel is the power. The gospel does not give power. It does not have power. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Now, let me, and I said something in the last, in the last live video. I said something. That the greatest demonstration of God's power was seen in the resurrection of Jesus. Because in the resurrection of Jesus, all power of God was muzzled together to resurrect Jesus from the dead. And that same power is the same power that when the sinner goes and says, Lord, I accept you into my life. That's the same power that comes and it dwells within that man. And that man is redeemed, is resurrected, is quickened from death into life. So the greatest demonstration of power of God is the preaching of the gospel. When you preach the gospel, the unbeliever hears it and receives it and he gets born again. The greatest demonstration of God's power has just happened. Because the power of God is seen in salvation, in saving men. So when you see the gospel being preached, that is the demonstration of the God's power. Mm, I just passed by that. It's not my emphasis today. So, you see that in Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. That there is another spirit, there is another Jesus. There is another gospel. So the other gospel is another Jesus, and another Jesus is another spirit. That's why you need to be careful. How will you know another spirit which is in oppression? By looking at the doctrine. No, it's not motivation. It's not, ah, you know, even though there is darkness, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. You know, today you may be weak. Tomorrow it shall be well. You know, today is a mystery. I don't know. I, I don't know how they say it. Today I don't know. Yesterday I don't know it was what. Today is a... I don't know. Tomorrow is a mystery. Today is the present. You know, hold on. Your day is coming. Because even though the rain rains, the sun will shine again. That's motivation. It's not the power of God. What is the power of God? The preaching of the gospel. What is the gospel? The preaching about the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. That's why Paul says, I deliver to you first that which I received, how Christ died for our sins, was raised for our justification. So the preaching of the gospel is when you say, Jesus died for your sin. He resurrected to justify you. And When Jesus resurrected, he ascended high and he took the hand of God. Then he came on earth and he took the hand, your hand, my hand, he took the hand of man and he brought the hand of God and with you and joined with God. It was a merging. He merged heaven and earth. He took the hand of God. He held the hand of God in his one hand and he held your hand in another hand and then brought the hand together, joined with God in a union that can never be separated. That's why Jesus says, in that day, you shall know that I in you, you in me, and we in you, and we shall come and make our abode in you. Now we are the headquarters of God. We are the residence of God. We are where God lives. Christ in us, the hope of God. Christ dwells within us. That's what Jesus does. That's the preaching of the gospel. It's not preaching 10 keys to success, 10 keys to be a millionaire. God has sent me to raise millionaires. Which verse says that? It's never about that. The gospel is about. Jesus died. And if you, you know, I was inspired by one story about, you know, Billy Graham, you know, said one story. says, one day he preached in the stadium. He preached. And when he was preaching, says, those who want to receive Jesus, come forward. No single soul cry. And he was frustrated and said, Lord, I don't know. Then another German businessman, a theologian, went to him and held him. said, Billy, did you notice what was wrong today? He said, no, sir. He says, you did not preach the cross. That's why no one came. Because you never preach the cross. The cross is the power of God to save men. And if you don't preach the power of God, 
it does not do well with men. No men, no men is no a man is looking for Jesus. And because you preach yourself, it does not have a power to serve. The power to serve is the gospel. Then Billy Graham said he went. Then he, in the next day, he preached on the cross the blood of Jesus, the salvation. And that day, many people came and received Jesus. Why? The power of God is seen in the cross. And when you preach the cross, you don't need tactics. You don't need to fake miracles. You don't need anything. Just release the gospel of God and let the power of God do what it can do. Hallelujah. So this other Jesus, this other gospel is a perversion. Let's go to let's go to First Timothy chapter four verse one. Hey, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. First Timothy chapter four verse one. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. In the last days, many people shall not endure sound doctrine. Why? Wide is the door that leads to destruction. Many find it. In the last days, many shall depart from faith. Departing from faith does not mean losing salvation or, deny, or saying I'm no longer a Christian. Departing from faith is departing from the true gospel, from sound doctrine. Many shall depart from sound doctrine, giving heed to seducing spirit and doctrine of devils. Speaking lies on hypocrisy, having their conscience sealed with hot iron, forbidding to marry, commanding to abstain from it, which God has created to be received with thanksgiving. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now, many people shall pay heed to seducing spirit. I need to underline this verse. <laughs> I need to underline this verse. This verse something, something. Many shall pay heed to seducing spirit. Hmm. Do you see that? Now, let's go to Galatians. Galatians chapter 1, verse 6. Galatians, if you are there, please open it for us. Galatians chapter 1, verse 6. Galatians chapter 1, verse 6 to 8. This is what the Bible says. I mother that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ, into another gospel. So there is another gospel, which Paul told us, another gospel, another Jesus, another spirit. I marvel you have been removed from the true gospel, into another gospel. Verse 7, which is not another. This gospel is not another gospel. It is a perversion of the gospel. Into another gospel. Another gospel, but there be some that trouble you, trouble you, and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Trouble is a Greek word, tarazo. It means to unsettle you. This is the gospel. Are you going to make it on the last day? On the last day. You know, you may be a Christian. You may be tongue speaking. You may be believing in Jesus. But, you know, if you are not Doing what God wants, you will go to hell. <laughs> you may be born again, but you can lose your salvation. Then you begin to pray, Lord, heaven at last. Lord, heaven at last. Mentally agitated. Paralagismo. Acting beside who you are. Know ye not that you have been saved, sealed forever unto the day of redemption? You have eternal life. But your mind has been corrupted and you have erred from the faith, the true doctrine of Christ. Doctrine of devils and seducing spirits. So this another gospel, the main thing you will see this gospel, it has an element to unsettle you. This gospel, when I've, it is after preaching, instead of rejoicing that Jesus died for me, you begin to cry. Lord, please, on the last day, I want to make it. Lord, please, heaven at last. You begin to cry, Lord, please, remember me in your kingdom. Remember me in your kingdom. Lord, please, I want to be where you are. Hmm. The gospel that unsettles you, it takes away your assurance in Christ. It removes your trust from believing that what Jesus has done is complete. And let me tell you, Jesus 
plus something equals nothing. Jesus minus everything equals everything. If you take Jesus and you do not add anything on top of Jesus, you have everything. But the moment you think that you need something to complete what Jesus has done, you have heard from the faith. Another gospel, parazo, which unsettles you. <sighs> Thank you, Lord. And would pervert the gospel of Christ. But look verse 8. But thou we, or an angel, from heaven, preach any gospel unto you than that which you received, let him be cast, cut off, an atom. As we said before, so I say again, if any man preach another gospel unto you than that which you have received, let him be cast off. If any, if any angel, now he says, if be any angel. Why is he saying any angel? Because angels have the tendency to preach another gospel. Wake up. Now I know many of you are having trouble there. You are having trouble there right now. If I was near you, you could have stoned me. Angels, the reason he says, if any angel comes to you, preaching that which you have not received, let him be a case of. That means if you see an angel, and he comes and says, brother, you are, you, you are born again. You can lose your salvation. And you know the scriptures that Jesus says in John chapter 10, verse 28 to 29. I give them eternal life and they shall never lose it. Nor shall, nor shall they perish through the ages. For the Father who has given to me is greater than all. And all that which I have, I will lose none. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 8 to 9. By the things which he suffered, he lent obedience. And having all these things, all these things happened. He became the author of eternal salvation. What is eternal? Permanent. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25. And he became the author of eternal salvation. Now Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25 says this. And he is able to save to the uttermost. The word uttermost, it means finally, perfect, complete, forever, for all time, permanent. For he is able to save them to the uttermost, seeing that he ever lived to make intercession for them and for them. He is able to save them to the uttermost. He is able to save them completely, finally, through all ages, through all time, permanently, eternally, all those who come to him. So you know that now. That This is what Jesus has done. So if that angel comes to you, just tell him, angel, shut up. Sit down. Let me teach you. You know why? Because angels, they do not know better. Angels, actually, we are the university of angels. That's why the Bible says that the power of God might be made known through the church to principalities, to powers, to rulers. Angels, right now we are preaching. Angels, they are there. They are listening. They are taking notes. Because that's why Peter said in First Peter chapter, First Peter chapter 1, verse 10 to 11, somewhere there. Peter says something, says, in regards to the salvation which the prophets prophesied, and the angels desired to look into these things. Angels were desiring to look into this salvation. Why? Because they do not know anything. That's why, you know, I said that angels never saw God. The moment they saw God was when Jesus was born. Because, first Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, For great is the mystery of godliness, that God was manifested in the flesh, sin of angel. The Greek word sin is a Greek word holaho, horao. It's a Greek word to perceive at last, to see openly, a vivid appearance. So he's saying that God was manifest in the flesh. The first time God was manifest in the flesh. So if you follow this some doctrine which they say Christophany, it's useless, it's, uh, it's wrong. Because the Christophany doctrine teaches you that, you know, Abraham saw God, you know, when he saw those three angels, it was God, the Son, the Father, and the Holy Ghost. That's nonsense. Those they were angels. They were not God. But you say, why did these angels spoke like God? Hey, hold on. God was manifested in the flesh. Now remember, the, the, sorry, the incarnation of Christ. It's a Greek word which means, which says homogenua, monogenes. Which means a kind that has never happened. And it has happened and it shall never repeat again. It's for once and for all. You shall never repeat again. That means it's the only time you will see divinity entering humanity 
for the first time and never shall it happen so if you follow that uh christopher and doctrine which says you know god appeared as an angel of the lord in the burning bush god appeared let me tell you when you see moses you would think that moses was talking about with the angel in the burning bush then when you read acts chapter 7 verse 51 the bible says that moses was given the commandment by an angel who was burning in the bush. But the Old Testament says Lord. Now that's why when you when you are reading the Old Testament, you see wherever it's Lord, Lord. Be careful. It's not talking about God. Because the word Lord may mean angels, God, rulers, kings, Satan, devils, demons. Any man who is in charge. That's why you need to be careful. When you read the Old Testament, you think Moses is talking to God in a bush. But the truth is, he is talking to an angel burning the bush. So the first time monogenua, the first time God made manifest in the flesh, just like John chapter 1, verse 10, verse 12 to 14, God became flesh, dwelt among us. It was the first time God was made manifest. That's why now when it says, sin of angels, horaho, perceive, to see vividly and a vivid appearance, it's like, you know, you have been looking at something brightly. You can't see what you are like. I, I don't know what's that, you know. But suddenly your eyes pop open. Then you see what like. It's like blind Bartimaeus. Blind Bartimaeus. What are you seeing? I see trees. Jesus prayed again. See where? What do you see? I see people. That's how it happened. When your eyes open, you see. You're like, ah, I see. You're like, it's not like horaho it's, it's not just a word that means you know like you say okay now wow 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 this is cool no it's when you see like i see that's an appear a vivid appearance that's how the angels when the angels that's why all angels they gathered around the manger they came to see baby jesus they're like ah here is the lord the first time angels saw god that's why you know we are the university of angels they learn from us they study about God by looking at us. So, the reason Paul says, if any angel comes to you preaching another gospel, is because he knows that the angels have a tendency to preach another gospel. We saw it in the Old Testament, where angels could, well, my God, angels were behind the wrecking havoc. A mistake, you are gone. That's why Hebrews chapter 2 says, if anyone under the law of Moses did the mistake, received a heavy punishment how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation under the law the angels were so harsh you do a mistake the ground opens swallows you you do a mistake anything what they are preaching another gospel because they are showing you a god who is a terrorist they are showing you a god who is a member of boko haram they are showing you a god who is killing people they are showing a merciless God, a God who is thirsty for blood. Every time is I need blood to appease me. A God who is looking for a mistake in you and to kill you. A God when you don't pay tithe, he rounds you off. A God who when you just do a single thing, he's merciless. He just kills you and if you did a mistake, he follows you to the fourth generation, kills everyone until he makes sure he kills even the offspring. A God who even, when you do a mistake, he kills all the family. Angels. That's why he's saying angels, because they have the potential to preach to you another gospel. That's why he says, if an angel comes to you and says, my friend, Jesus will die for you. Say, hey, hold on. The Bible says, by his stripes I'm healed. Jesus has died. He's not going to die. The angel will be like, ah, I never knew that. Another correction. You say, angel, come here, come here. Sit down. Let me teach you something. Jesus died. He's not going to die. Hallelujah. That's why you see in the Old Testament there is a heavy operation of angels. But when Jesus came, there was no angel flying around, no. They just came to announce the birth of Jesus. After that they went. Then they came at the last when Jesus was praying. After that they went. Then we see them later in Acts when they come to deliver uh, Peter from prison. Now, but something is, 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 is so terrible. In the Old Testament, angels were rounding off people, killing them useless, merciless. In the New Testament, they are coming to deliver Peter from bonds. Now it shows you that they have been a reset because Jesus is the revelation of God. That's why Jesus came and says, Moses said, I say why I'm correcting what they said about me. Hallelujah. So another gospel, another go. And if an, any angel... Even if a man dies, says, I went to hell, I went to heaven, and I came back to tell you what God has said. 
Okay, say what do you want to say? Then the man tells you, you know, in heaven we have cars. Say, you were not in heaven. You were just in a fairy land. Yeah? You know, the Anastasia you received, it has wrecked your mind. If anyone says, you know, I went to hell and I saw women who wear wigs, women who paint their lips, women who paint their eyebrows, women who paint their nails, women who wear makeup, women who wear trousers, all of them, they were in the hell. Hey, tell him. You were not in hell, actually. Even, even You did not even go to hell. You were in a fairy land, in your mental, it's a mental agitation, doctrine of devils and seducing spirits. But many people, they are led astray from such. That's why Jesus says, many people are, are heading towards the destructive way. They are heading towards the wide door. That's the wide door. Many people, they find it. Hands of the Bella and the Tipa Barabos. That's why, you know, many people, they are resisting the gospel. When they hear, we say that Jesus is the main thing. You don't need money. You, Jesus does not give you money. They're like, ah, stop there, stop there. God blessed Abraham with money. He said, I will bless you with... The blessing of Abraham was not money. The blessing of Abraham was forgiveness of sin. So, but man, you know, no, no, no. How could you say God does not bless you with money? You know, I've been giving and every time I give, God blesses me. You know why? So wide. Is the door that leads to destruction. Few find the narrow way. So when Jesus is saying the narrow way in Matthew chapter 7, he's not talking about many going to hell and few going to heaven. He's saying many will be deceived by false prophets, which he says in verse 14. They shall be led away, led astray into another gospel, another Jesus, another spirit, a perverted gospel. A gospel which says godliness is a means of gain. You come to God to have money. You know, you come to God, you will have a good house. You come to God, your problems will end. Hey, let me tell you, Jesus did not come to solve your problems. Jesus never came to solve your problems. Because if he came to solve your problems, then the problems are relative. If Jesus came to make you rich, then Bill Gates does not need him because he's already rich. If Jesus came to heal the sick, then the healthy do not need him. Those who even lie on science do not need him, do not need him because they are well. What did Jesus come to do? Jesus came to solve a common problem for the common man. A rich man, whether poor, whether rich, whether a president, the great, the small, all of them have this one single problem, sin. All of them, they are in need of salvation. They need salvation. So Jesus came for the common problem for the common man. Why the rich man has sin means salvation. The poor man has sin means salvation. So Jesus came for the common problem to give man salvation. But this other gospel that leads to destruction, and the destruction that is not going to hell, the destruction means erring from faith. Because if you don't pay heed to, 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 to the right gospel, to the sound doctrine, you will pierce yourself with many arrows. Because now it's not you. This month is breakthrough. Next month is breakthrough. Next month is breakthrough. After two years breakthrough. How many times are you going to break through? Have you not stopped breaking through? You know, this is, year, the, this is the year of greater works, greater glory. Greater manifestation of the power of God. This day of God's fulfillment, your life will be fulfilled. Next year again, this day of prosperity. Okay, next year, this day of, pro, of, 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 of perfection. Next year, this day of taking over the world. You keep on, that's why the devil specializes in that. He keeps on fixing, shifting the goalpost. Instead of telling you, Jesus has done rest. Now you are not in rest. You are constantly looking, looking, you know. You are looking, you are looking, you know. You Now you have developed the greed. You are coming to church. The reason you are tithing is because you are tithing because you think God will give me millions. That's why you are tithing. You know, the reason you are coming to church, you know, you know many people, if they were to remove all these things, they would not never go to church. If we are to say that, okay, you, you know, God, that if, if it, many people know that God does not give you money, Many people stop tithing. Why? Because their motive was not correct. They were not tithing for God. In the first place, they were tithing for their own lusts. Hallelujah. So, great is the, nah, is the wide door that leads to destruction. Erring from faith. You are piercing yourself with many sorrows. Christ has redeemed you. He has finished all the work. But yet, you are still unsettled. You are still praying, Lord, heaven at last. 
Oh, oh Lord, I make it. Oh Lord, please save me. Oh Lord, please for you. you Lord, you know I did the same today. Both that which I know, that which I don't know, that which I did deliberate, that which I committed, that which I forgot, that which I did not forget. You continue to make sin to mention all the sins. You make sure you are mentioning all of them so that you are thinking because God is angry with me. You know I have to confess all of them because He needs forgive me. He needs to forgive me because your mind has been agitated. But the moment we tell you, you have been forgiven. There is nothing more you will do to remove that forgiveness. There is nothing less you will do to remove that forgiveness. Christ forgave you behind, beyond time. Let me, let me give you this example. Jesus forgave all the sins of the whole world, even the sins of your great, grand, grand sons, and the sins you may commit in 20 years' time, Jesus already forgave them. Because, you know, when we get born again, we are not crucifying Jesus again. We are just receiving that forgiveness he has made available. So Jesus is not forgiving. So he's not forgiving us. He has already forgiven us. Because he is not going to die again. He has paid for all sins from eternity past to eternity future. Having cancelled the legal indebtedness that stood us between God. He has torn down the wall of partition. And has brought us nearer to God. So all your sins are forgiven. So the moment we tell you, you have already been forgiven. You don't need to come before God, Lord, I am a sinner. Oh, how are you? My friend, if you are a sinner, you better be born again. Oh, Lord, forgive me. That which I did, that which I did not do. You are putting your mind like a, a God who keeps records of sins. Even David, who, is not, who was not born again, he said in Psalms chapter 130, verse 1 to 4, he says, For thou, O Lord, if you kept record of our sins, who could stand from being condemned? But there is mercy and forgiveness with you that you may be revered. Even David knew that God does not keep record of sins. You, you are thinking God keeps record of your sins. While Jesus himself to told you that you must forgive seven times, seven, seven times in a day. What he's telling you is telling you, don't remember. So God cannot tell you to do something that he cannot do. God tells you. That's why Jesus says, do this. So that you may be children of God. Why? We model after God. We do what God does. So if God tells us that we... You know, for us to understand what God does, we need to look at what God told us to do and not to do. If God says do not be angry, we cannot be angry. If God says do not kill, he does not kill. If God says that, you know, forgive and forget, do not remember, forgive seven times, seven times, seven, seven. Do not keep record of people's sin. It means he does not. But because you have been agitated, you are thinking of your God who you come before you need to. You, you come before God, you are like, hmm. Oh, Father, in Jesus' name, the devil comes up. Oh, your Father, you are from sinning right now. How dare you call God the Father? So, oh, Almighty God, you say, are you sure? Say, oh, the I am there I am. The greater than the greatest. The taller than the tallest. The shorter than the shortest. The father than the father. Oh, Elohim, Elohim. Oh, El Shaddai, El Elion. Jehovah Medikanikishen. Jehovah Chikopokopo. Jehovah Ha. Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah El Elion. Jehovah Shama. Jehovah Jaira. Jehovah Adonai. Jehovah El Kapaima Vairichmi. Jehovah, Jehovah Hakima. Oh, Father, the greatest, the Almighty God. The Shekabo, the Unshekabo Sheka. The creator of the universe. The father of the father. Now the devil has pursued, he has, there is one thing that Jesus, the Bible says, we have received the spirit of adoption and cry out, Abba, Father. Not Jehovah, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Rofeka, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Hukima, the greater than the greatest, the great I am, the, 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 the maker of the way, the way maker, the terrible God, the, the unshakable shaker, the redeemer, the power of the almighty God. Who is like that to you, God? The all-wise God, the all-powerful God, the all-knowing God, the omnipotent God. The, <laughs> the devil has succeeded by showing you that the God is not your father. Jesus never called God, eh, Jehovah, Nisi, Jehovah. He says, Father, I thank you that you am all right. And we, having received the spirit of Christ, we cry out, Abba, Father. When we come, we say, Father, I thank you that you hear me always. Ha! Glory be to God. I thank you, Father. You come with assurance. Because you know, he is your father. He's not a terrorist. He is your father. Glory be to God. Distraction. Hey, 
Madika Bato to Grosh. But we, we pray everybody who is right here, who has been led astray, and those who have not come to the knowledge of the truth, that Lord in Jesus' name, this truth may ring big in their inside until nothing else matters. Now, we have seen it, and remember, I, I said that in Matthew chapter 7, verse 13, Jesus is talking about the wide door and narrow door. The wide door is talking about the false gospel, the false teachers, the false preachers, the false prophet, which will lead men into destruction. The destruction is aimed from faith, teaching lies, damnable heresies. The narrow door is this which preach the sound doctrine, and few people are preaching sound doctrine. Jesus is not talking about going to hell and heaven, he's dealing with doctrine. But then there's another scripture that now talks about something like going to hell or going to heaven. It's the same with narrow door. But remember, I said these two parables, they seem the same, but they are not the same. Open your Bible in Luke chapter 13. Mm. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thy word is a lamp unto our feet. Ah, Ale Kondi Big Kabbalah, brothers. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for that brother, that sister, that mother, that father. Eh, so deep, Amba, Pelibrodosh. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name for the great things you are doing in their lives. Luke chapter 13, verse 23. Look at what the Bible says. The Bible says this. 23. Where is 23? Oh, then, hey, hold on. Let me read it for you. Because this again will seem like Jesus talking about going to hell and heaven. Look at verse 22. And he went through the cities and villages, teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem. 23. Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? How many will be saved? This question is saying, how many will be saved? Are there few which are be saved? Now look at what Jesus. And he said unto them. 24. Strive to enter in at the straight gate, the narrow door. For men, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. Hmm. When once the master of the house is risen up and they are shut the door, and he begin to stand without to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open for us. He shall ask and say, I know not you, whence ye are. Then shall ye begin to say, We have eaten and drank their presence, and thou hast taught in the streets. But I shall you, I know you not, whence ye are. Depart from me. Workers of iniquity. There shall be winner, weeping, gnashing of teeth. When you shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourself thrust out. Ah, God bless the reading of this word. Now, this is the passage now that seems to say that, you know, few people will find heaven. But you see, it did not mention the wide door, it just mentioned the narrow door. Remember, I said in Matthew 7 is a different scenario, and we have dealt it. It's talking about doctrine, leading away false prophets, whatever. But this is a straight one. It says, Lord, how many people will be saved? How many people are they saved? Now, Jesus seems like to say, few will be saved. Because listen again, the response says in verse 23 24, 24, strive to enter the straight gate. For men I say unto you, will seek to enter into and shall not be able. Now, it, does it mean that many people will look for Jesus but they will not manage? I mean, that's what the Bible is saying. Many will seek to enter in and they shall not be able. Does it mean many will look desperate for Jesus? No, they need you. And God will be like, ah, 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 stay away, stay away, stay away. I don't know, want to. Or many will be like, Lord, I need your salvation. And be like, ah, ah, no. No, 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 stay away. Will Jesus be casting away some? Does it mean that some will try to come to salvation, but God will reject them? Because that's what it seems. Many will seek to enter in. That means they will see and come, no, 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 no. Lord, please open me. I need salvation. And the Lord will be like, uh, uh, you are not welcome here. Is it what is meaning? No. Now, I want to break first some words down before we understand this. He says, strive to enter into the narrow door. Oh, for legalism, this is another good scripture. Strive. You, you need to strive. You need to put effort. You know, if you don't strive, you won't enter. But let's see. Let's deal first with the word strive. Now, you know very well that you are saved by grace through faith, not of yourself. It is the gift of God. So there is no striving. You do not need to strive. 
Now, before I show you the scriptures, let me tell you something. We need to understand that from, from uh, Exodus to Malachi is the Old Testament. Matthew, John, Luke, Mark is not New Testament. It's a transitional book. The New Testament begins in the book of Acts. So, Jesus was born under the law. And he teached under the law. And the things he's speaking here, he speaks them under the law. Hmm. That's why you know, if you take the message of the Gospels, the synoptics, without proper interpretation, you will preach heresy. Because first, you need to understand that the New Testament begins after the resurrection of Jesus. You will read, let me give you some scripture, you read on your own time. Hebrews chapter 8. The testament begins when the testator dies. So that means Jesus' testament, the New Testament, could never begin until there was shedding of blood or Jesus died. So Matthew, Luke, John, Mark, they are not New Testament. They are transitional books. So if you don't pay heed, you will enter into error. Now there is a difference how Jesus taught. That's why you know Jesus in, in John chapter 14, 16, 17. He says, I desired to say to you many things, but you could not comprehend. How come when the Spirit of God come, he shall unveil all the truth to you? What Jesus says, says the little big deal I wanted to say, I did not say it because you could not get it. But when the Spirit comes, he will teach you anything. Everything that you I never taught. Now, when did the Spirit come? In, in the book of Acts. In the day of Pentecost. So the Spirit came now, revealed those things Jesus did not speak about. Those are the things written in the epistles. Now, the reason why Jesus did not communicate all he wanted is because the people were spiritual, they, they could not receive revelation. He just told them, you know, uh, anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood will have eternal life. And they were like, come on, we are not zombies. How can we eat this man? They were offended. When Jesus says, I'm the son of God, he says, you are claiming me too much. When Jesus says, I and my father are one, they are saying, listen, this barbarous, this son of carpenter, this cheapish boy, how come he they says he's God? They could not receive the revelation. So Jesus had now to water down the message because people could not receive it. Now, I will not dwell on that. Just know it that in, now when Jesus communicated in the Gospels, it's a different communication as a New Testament. Now, the reason he's saying strive to enter through the door, that first should ring a bell in you. You know you are not saved by works, you are saved by grace. When now he says strive to enter through the narrow door, you should know Jesus speaking way under the law. Under the law. And remember, under the law, they strive to do works to justify themselves. Under the law, you need to keep the precepts, the principles up to the conduct, up to the codes of the law for you to be justified. Under the law, you need to strive. But under grace, you need to rest. Jesus has done it all. But now, here under the law, when he says strive, it's because he's speaking under the law to people under the law. And remember, he has not yet died. So he cannot tell them you are saved by grace. No. He has not yet died. He has not yet resurrected. So the salvation of Jesus has not yet been made manifest. It has not yet been made available freely. Salvation has... Sal, let me say this. Salvation existed. You know, because this gospel did not begin with apostles. This gospel began with Adam. It began with Eden. It went to Abraham, it went to Moses, to the children of Israel. It's the same message. It never changed. Until today, it's the same message. Just in the Old Testament, they never understood this. So it was scripted, hidden, hidden within their daily activity. So when he says tribes, he's talking to people under the law. He's saying under the law. He's saying to people under the law, strive to enter through the narrow door. For few find it. Why is he saying that? Few believed in Jesus. Few received him as the Messiah, as the Son of God. And says, strive. 
now for you now to believe me you you are saying okay but you know i need some scripture to see if we need to strive or not i want to show you first that you don't need to strive glory be to god and now open your bibles in romans chapter 11 verse 6 and if you are already the priest type it down there so you can save us time and god bless you so much romans chapter 11 verse 6 ah oh, thank you jesus romans chapter 11 verse 6 the bible says uh huh chapter 5 verse 6 listen to this even so at this present time also there is a lamb a remnant according to the election of grace a remnant according to the election of grace thank you father thank you lord 4 6 listen to verse 6 and if by grace then it is no more of works ah 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 malika baba lekuda batos if by grace it is no more of works otherwise grace is no more grace Hmm. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for the free gifts that are bound to us freely in Christ. If by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. The moment you think you have to do something to be saved, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more of grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. <laughs> thank you father that we are saved the gifts of god just like your word declares in romans chapter 11 verse 29 that the gifts of god they are irreversible lord we just want to take this time and thank you lord for the gifts you have given us to us freely because if it was based on my action my conduct my behavior i would never have been saved i would have fallen short thousand times million times billion times and i'm on my way to hell But Lord, thou looked at me and said, I have no capacity to do this. Thou sent your only begotten son, that when I believe in him, I shall be saved. Not because of my works. Thank you, Father, for justifying us based on what Jesus has done, not based on what I do. It is the cross that justifies me. Thank you, Father. If it is by grace, it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. But now you will tell me, but James says, faith without works is dead. Now, let me, let me tell you. Remember now James is dealing with brothers, brethren in love. He's dealing with this. If you come, you say, brother Fabrice. Uh, today it is very hard with this corona. I don't have food. Then I say, Madeko baga bala baga. Lift up your hands and let me pray for you. Agua taka ge go gonga da ki go de de si baba la kore de henzi. Hey, you don't need prayer. It does not need prayer. The moment I hear, I slept hungry yesterday. While I have money, while I have food, there is no prayer. When I begin to pray, I'm a hypocrite. When I see that and I have power, I have money, I have It is in my power to provide. The first thing I should do, brother, come get food. Or take this food to help yourself. Then let's pray. Pray after you have helped your brother. When a brother comes, brother, oh, I don't have clothes. You do not need to pray for him. Uh, uh, give him first. Provide, meet that need first. Then pray for him. You do not pray first. Before you pray, provide it. That's what James is dealing with. So when he says, faith without works is dead. What is meaning? His meaning if you have faith. But then you know your brother comes hungry. You but you are not providing. You are it's useless. But now let me let me put it in the perspective of salvation. If you say in the perspective of salvation. Now the Bible says we have been saved unto good works. Good works which have been for ordained for us to work in. Now That means that when you are saved, you are saved to do good works. You are not saved because of good works. You are saved to do good works. Let your light shine before men, so that men when they see it, they shall glorify thy Father who is in heaven. Why? Follow after, follow men with peace and holiness. 
follow men uh, no follow after men with peace and the holiness without which man shall never see god it's not meaning that without holiness shall see god it's meaning let your conduct your born again conduct your nature be ex- displayed be seen among your community so that when the people look at you you will not be a stumbling block a hindrance a blockage from someone to receive salvation so let your conduct be good so that when people see you they will glorify god and in you through you they will see god so you are not saved for good you are not saved because of good works right and you are not saved the reason you are not you are saved you are not saved to do good works you know when you are saved it's much you do good works because some they die without good works while they are saved and they will not go to hell because in the first Corinthians chapter 3 verse 11 to 15 says Christ is the only foundation but let any man who builds thereon take heed on which he builds because at the last time it shall be tested by fire if you build with grass hay wood gold or silver fire will make it manifest and if it survives fire you shall be saved and receive the reward but if your works are burned if they are burned thou shall be yet saved but you shall be as a person who escapes through the flames he's saying that if someone builds carelessly on the foundation then the fire makes it manifest the person will suffer loss and remember you are suffering loss in eternity he will suffer loss yet will be saved like someone who passes through the flames of fire yet will be saved imagine as we the people who have been faithful to the gospel preaching the message of Jesus Jesus will be like welcome home thou faithful servant that's all many people they think like in heaven they will be having crowns oh that's carnality heaven there is no materials there is no gold in heaven why do you think naturally you are you are thinking like we have crowns this one will have a big crown this one small this will be having ranks no the 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 the, the, the reward it's welcome thou faithfully and a servant who has been faithful in all things that's a thank you and it's from jesus remember and it's not useless oh and remember you just got into heaven you just enter okoro has entered heaven and no word no die welcome on a faithful and humble servant you just enter nothing you will suffer loss for all eternity yet you are in heaven <laughs> ah sh- So the reason you are saved is not because of good works not to do good works but you should let the good works display among others so that they will glorify God so James when he saying faith without works is dead what he's talking about he's not talking about you know when you have faith you should do works his meaning this that faith must produce fruits for us to see okay must produce fruits for us to see However, the fruit is not the reason you are saved. The fruit is not the reason why you receive salvation or you are you are saved. The fruit is a product of the faith. And you can hinder that fruit from manifesting or you can fertilize that fr- that fruit. Hallelujah. So, remember, if it is grace, it's no longer of works. If it is works, then works is not works. Let me throw in another scriptures God punish the devil Romans chapter 4 verse 1 to 5 Okay let me go first Romans chapter 9 verse 11 Mhm Thank you Father Mhm listen to this For the children be not yet born neither having done any good or evil that the purpose of God according to election might stand not of works but of him that calleth Now it is say it is talking about Jacob and Esau. It's saying the reason why Jacob was loved and the, the you know when you read the Old Testament it says Jacob I love he Esau I hate. It's not actually God saying I hate Esau. No, it's according to the predestination to the foreknowledge of God. God knew that Esau would be a good boy. Jacob would be a very bad boy. And you know Jacob was a very bad boy. You see that Jacob would be a very bad boy. But you know because of predestination God to to show that his saving grace would be with grace not of works. Because if he would have chosen Esau, 
would have said, I chose Esau because Esau is a nice guy. But you chose Jacob, a bad, shrewd guy, because you wanted to show that grace is not of works. Do you see that? Let's go to verse 16. Romans 9, 16. It says, uh, Romans chapter 9, verse 11, what is 9, yeah, 9, 16. It says, So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. It is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, that who does work, but of God that showeth mercy. It's because of mercy. Now let, let's proceed in Romans chapter 4, Romans chapter 4 verse 1. It says, What shall we say then about Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh has found? Verse 2, If Abraham were justified by works, he has something whereof to glory, but not before God. If Abraham was justified by works, he had something to boast about, but not before God. Listen to this, verse 3. For what said the scriptures? Abraham believed God and it was counted to him righteousness. Now let me tell you the difference. People, they try to teach you faith from Abraham. You know, they say Abraham is our model of faith. No, the Bible never tells us to learn anything from Abraham. It only tells us to look, to, to learn about his faith, not his conduct, not his word. Now, when it says faith, remember, Abraham righteousness was credited to him. As righteousness is not credited to us, we are the righteousness of God. Righteousness is our nature. But Abraham was credited to him as it is our nature. There is a difference between that, but we are not dwelling on that. And when you read the Hebrews chapter 11, write down Hebrews chapter 11 verse 14. It says they waited with us. They waited to be made perfect with us. Right? So Abraham believed God was credited to him as righteousness. For now to him that worketh, do you see that? Now to him that worketh is the reward not the cond of grace but of debt. Imagine your boss comes and say, uh, Brother Cabbage, uh, you know, I'll be giving you a 10,000 gift. You'll be like, oh, thank you, boss, thank you, boss. Then he goes. Then tomorrow he gives you the gift. Then you, after the end month, you wait for the salary. You don't receive. Then you go to the uh, boss, you know. I haven't received the my salary. Then it's like, ah, I gave you the salary. That gift was your salary. Would you say it's a gift? No. Why? Because you worked for it. You deserve it. So saying, if it is of works, then it is not reckoned. Is not reckoned of grace, but of debt, because it means God owes you. If it is of works, it means God owes you because you have qualified. And you deserve it. So God owes you. It's no longer of grace. But to him that worketh not. To him that worketh not. But believeth on him that justifies the ungodly. His faith is counted for him as righteousness. To him who does not work. To him who does not rely on his works. Who does not say, Lord, I fast twice every day. Lord, I tithe. I come to church every day. I preach. I do all this. Lord, you see all this one, that's why you must bless me. But to the one who does not work, but believes on God. No, I know, Lord, I, 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 I make mistakes. I know, Lord, I am still make some sins. I still sin sometimes. But I thank you that thou hast saved me, not of works. When you trust in God that level, that faith is righteousness. That one is righteousness. But when you just make a mistake, you're like, oh God, forgive me, I won't do it again. In fact, tomorrow we try not to lie, tomorrow we try not to do this. You have departed from the righteousness of grace. You have entered the righteousness of the law. And in the righteousness of the law, no man can be justified. You see that? So to him who does not work, but believes on God, his faith is counted to him, is righteousness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look verse 6. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man, and to whom God imputed right righteousness without works. Even David says, Blessed is the man who God imputes righteousness, righteousness without works, devoid of works. 
Glory be to God. Hallelujah. This is the good news. It is the good news, ladies and gentlemen. Because, you know, this good news should be heard. Because, you know, you are not, if it was based on your works, if God can judge you based on the law, you will never be saved. In fact, I was studying about, you know, the book of uh, life and the books, you know. I found something very amazing. That the books, they, they represent something very terrible for unbelievers. And uh, I will share it, you know, in a post one day. Okay, uh, let's go to um, 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 9. 2 Timothy... We are about to be done. Ah, Zodegem Bagabala Prodebehes. Thank you, Father Lord. Thy word is great. Thy, we love your word. We swim in your word. We eat your word. We live in your word. Ah, thank you, Lord, for this word of God that is building us every day. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 9. Please, if you if you have already found it, just type it there so you can save us some time. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 9. Listen what it says. Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began, not because of our works, according to his own purpose and grace. I wonder, how will you read this verse and still think that you should wear a, you should wear a dress not wear trousers to be saved not put on makeup or you should be good you should do some good things it is not of works yes you should do some works but that is not the reason you are saved yes you do some works that's not going to save you do some works do good works but never put them like this is pleasing god you already please god i do good works because i am good I do good works because I am blessed. I do good works because I am the righteousness of God. I do good works because Christ lives inside me. I do good works to respond to the love of God. I do the good works. However, it's not the main dish. What if a Christian lives reckless and goes around, sleeping around, sleeping around? What happens? That man, the flesh will condemn him. Yes, there is no condemnation in Christ, but in the flesh is there. Yeah, the flesh will condemn him. The moment gonorrhea, syphilis, HIV, and AIDS hits him, he will experience hell on earth. Yet he will be saved. Mm -hmm. We need to get that. Not of works. Glory be to God. Not of works. Now let, let's go to uh, Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 to 9. I know it by head. For it is by grace... Are you saved through faith, not of yourself, not of works, lest any man boast, it is by the grace of God. For by grace are you saved, not of works. Hallelujah. Let's go to Titus, uh, my favorite scripture. This, is the, this was the first scripture I read when I was, when I was uh, you know, going through the swimming exercises, through the, the class of swimming exercises, you know. <laughs> Titus chapter 3 Titus chapter 1 <clears throat> no Titus chapter 3 verse 4 but after the kindness and love of God our Savior towards man appeared not of works which we have done in righteousness but according to his own mercy he saved us by the washing of the generation and the renewal of the Holy Ghost, which he shed upon us abundantly through Jesus Christ, that being justified by his grace, we should be made his according to the hope of eternal life. Not of works which we do in righteousness. We have been saved by grace, not of works which we do in righteousness. Ah, ha, ha, kababi, mindo do bishagala brades. But you know, let me show you the last scripture. This is my best one, and I will close with this one. This is my best, best scripture. That's why you know I waited at the end to show it to you. John chapter 6, verse 27 to 29. Listen to this. John chapter 6, verse 27 to 29. Aha. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 27 to 29. 
what does the Bible say? The Bible says, uh, Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him that hath God the Father sealed. 28. Then they said unto him, Now look at the question. They said unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? What can we do to do the works? These disciples are like, Jesus, please. Uh, forget about grace. Grace has done it. Grace has done it. Grace has done it. I don't need to do I need to do something. Lord, what can I do? Hmm. What shall we do that we might work the works of God? What is the response? Eh? Look at this. Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God. This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he has sent. This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he has sent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the work of God. Jesus says, this is the work of God, that you may believe in Christ whom God has sent. So the work of God, the work of God is this. When, I, when someone asks you, what are you doing to be saved? Tell him, believing. Believing is the work of God that is required. The work of God to do is by believing in Jesus. So Jesus says, this is the work of God, that ye may believe, in the Son of God, who is sent. So believing is the work. And once you believe, you have worked the works. That's the main work. By grace are you saved. So when now the Bible says in Luke chapter 13, verse 22 to 24, that enter through the narrow door. You see that strive. He's talking to people under the law. Because the cross has not yet been made manifest. Grace has not yet been shed up. Has not yet been made available. They still have to qualify for themselves. So that's why he says, strive to enter therein. Why? Because few have known Jesus. Few have known Jesus. Less. But many, they haven't yet. So strive. Do works. It still works. Why? It's the Old Testament. Look at verse 23. Let me le repeat again. Luke chapter 13, verse 23 to 24. Strive to enter into the straight gate. For men I sent you will seek to enter in, and they shall not be able. Why will they seek to enter in? Because remember, no man is justified by the law. They will seek because the law places a demand on you, but also destroys your capacity. The law shows you that you need salvation. The law shows you that you need Jesus. The law shows you that you need to be saved. But when now you try, the law kills that ability. It condemns you. It, it condemns you. It keeps on condemning you. Instead of helping you, it kills you. It, it slays you. That's why many shall seek to enter, but they shall fail. Why? Because by the law, no man shall be justified. You try to not lie. Once you break the one commandment, you broke all. By the law, no flesh can be justified because you cannot follow the law. You, as a human nature, you cannot manage to follow the law. That's why many will seek. You know you need the salvation. You know you need God. You know you need to be saved. You try to do, yet you keep on falling short because the law, no man shall be saved. Many shall seek it, but few shall be saved. Jesus is talking about the law. Is not talking about heaven and hell. Do you see that? Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Ah, Zete Bapala. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So, do, do you see what I'm saying already? Did you see what I'm saying? Few find it. Many stray away. So in Matthew now chapter in Matthew 7, Jesus is talking about the wide and narrow door, about the doctrine, deception, the last day, the first message, the first prophet, destruction by the heresy. In Luke chapter 13, when he's talking about the wide, the narrow door, he's talking about the law being justified by your own works because the cross has not yet been manifest. The love of God, the grace has not yet made been available. 
for people to come out of that bondage and enter into the rest where they are no struggles no striving you just rest in what jesus has done for you hallelujah so th that's very very paramount for you to understand anytime before you say anything before you take that scripture before you explain it you need first to understand what it is speaking about hallelujah mm. Mm, 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 mm. hallelujah hallelujah so i have finished bringing the scriptures to you and i have shown you what the narrow door and the gateway means the narrow door, the white is dealing. The narrow door is dealing with sound doctrine. The white door is dealing with deception, false prophets, false messages, false Christ, another gospel, another Jesus, another spirit. And in the look, I've shown you when they asked me how many shall be saved, is dealing with the law before the cross. After the cross, Jesus is the higher way to God. Many people, let me tell you, this not many people will go to hell. Few people will go to hell. Many people will go to heaven, trillions of not trillions, because Jesus is not a fool to die on the cross. He did not just die for useless things so that the devil can can take many people. No, Jesus will take many people will go to hell than oh sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. This is a reflex. You see now the problem. I cross my mind in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Confusion is out of my mind. I have credit in Jesus' name. So many people will go to heaven than many will go to hell. Few people will go to hell. Ah. And I said in the beginning, I said, when a man dies, never conclude the way he has gone. Never say this man has gone to hell. Maybe he's a drunkard, a prostitute, or someone who is misbehaving. Never conclude. Because on the deathbed, maybe before they died, someone was next to them. Maybe before they died, they called upon the name of the Lord. They received Jesus. They met the Lord. Before they gave their last breath, you don't know what took place there. So never conclude this man has gone to hell. He may be an atheist, you don't know what happened. You are not going to conclude, you leave it in the hand of God. And you wait until you get into heaven, that's when you see. For example, people will ask us, uh, did Judas Iscariot go to hell or heaven? We say, why shouldn't we wait when we get to heaven, that's when we know. <laughs> that's when we know. Uh, all right hallelujah glory be to god so thank you so much for everybody who tuned in right now share this message to many people you know many people have never heard this parable being told they have never understood it they are still hanging from faith preaching other things you know you need to send this message to someone so that someone may come to the knowledge of the truth and you know what's very nice is when you send someone this gospel then he receives it you have reaped the eternal harvest you, you know you have made the heaven to rejoice and you know when you get to heaven that is your eternal joy because you know it is for eternal that's why you know you should be eternal focused don't focus on temporary things don't focus on getting money what focus on winning souls Focus on giving money to push the gospel forward. Why? Because, you know, it is the only thing that will remain eternally. It's the only thing that will be proud of eternally. It's the only thing that when you'll be sitting, you'll be remembering, mm, I preach it to people, oh God, eternally. It's your reward eternally. Because, you know, life does not end here. When you die, it's the beginning of life. Now, and you will live more years than you have lived on earth. You will live trillions of years, uncountable years. Than, than the years you have lived here. But imagine when you rejoice, you shared to someone and that someone understood and picked the right thing. When you understood your own soul, that's your eternal harvest is your eternal joy. So send this message to many people. Preach it. Share it. Ah, 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 ah. I'm telling you, God is doing great, great and mighty things. Hallelujah. So, you know, before we let you go right now, uh, those who are watching us from Canada, it's already midnight, and uh, we are left with 18 minutes to 1 a.m. Uh, <laughs> and we are up. All right. And those who are in Africa, I don't know what time is it. I think it's evening. But God bless you for tuning all of you. All of you have deprived yourself of sleeping. You have just woke up from your bed to just hear me teach. You know, your reward is great. I cannot reward you. 
your reward is great in heaven and don't just get this knowledge for just get this knowledge preach it to someone share it somewhere oh my god your reward is great and god is not unrighteous to forget your labor of love and those who are watching us from africa we love you so much but before we go out you know we just want to take this time and pray with you if you are not born again give us the privilege to lead you to christ to pray with you to teach you and also you can join us on whatsapp where we share the message of christ with other people with the entire community our number uh you just type in the comments there because if i give you my number i will need to spell it for everyone not everyone will hear it um i will just if you want to join us on whatsapp in the group where we listen to the word of god we share we feast that the word of god we are constantly building ourselves and growing up in the knowledge of christ just let me know let us know in the comment section then we will add you up Oh my god my god but before we go you know we just want to take this short time and pray with you so if you have any problem you maybe you have sickness you any problem let's just know in the comment section and pray with you or if you do not have any problem no problem jesus is always on the throne jesus is the lord he has blessed us with all the things and if you don't prefer to say it if you do not prefer to say uh what you think we can pray with you we can stand in faith for you with you together with you you can just type uh uh i need prayer uh or you can just type amen pray with us pray for us we 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 we'll just pray with you we don't need to know what's going on we don't need to know what is happening we just want to pray with you right now so if you type it or if you know we don't need you to send a long message a long comment a long message you know this this you know many people they send us so long message you know um this this so long and man we don't need, we don't need to know the thing you just tell us what we, you want us to pray you know i want you to, to pray about this to pray this we will join with you stand in faith with you believing for that thing but anyway because we haven't seen any comments let's just pray for everybody here father we bless your name for everyone who's here right now eh sadiko de kamai kiko datila akoba mentida las Thank you Lord for everybody who is tuned in right now. Lord we pray that in the name of Jesus that burdens and yokes are destroyed, the eyes of their understanding are enlightened, they continue to see the right, they are going in Christ, they are going in the knowledge of his grace. And we pray Lord that any man who is sick right now watching us, sickness is terminated, that sickness is destroyed, that sickness we rebuke in the name of Jesus and we declare your body is healed in the name of Jesus. we direct the power of god into that part of the body that eye into that leg into that hand into that heart into wherever into the tissue the muscles the bones the ligaments the tendons lord we direct the power of god right now to effect the change in jesus name like calling me that dodo baseda a code blashata rakuda kados mi ande kile bengo ko godi kibango si zele bosata Laki go de mente di ke bossa la bradesh no do pray for that man that man who has eye condition eye problems itonto totile bebi apados that man who is waiting for surgery leninga da basudi manda da kazi the power of god is not in shortage the power of god is not inadequate the power of god is more than enough that man who has eye problems who's waiting to go for a surgery we pray right now he receives a miracle in jesus name a miracle in jesus name that eye condition is corrected your body is healed in jesus name eh thank you father li kodobra shaka la monde mira baba suga da kanga yende tita malengo akagura batila brodosha rababa sode yangaga so gela kaga so de rankaga so de la kaga yondi atati kabonga da bila kada every debilitating condition debilitating condition le cause mbrekuzi akade ya maleku de beheje in the name of jesus father we pray antia kaluza batas they are healed right now that man lord who has a leg condition that leg condition which is very bad we pray right now he's healed in jesus name wherever he is he receives healing 
Oh, thank you, Father, for all the people who are healing right now. All the people, Lord, the healing is already available for us. By the power of the cross, healing is already available for us. Therefore, Lord, we just receive it right now because we know the moment we set our heart to understand these things, thou have released us. Before we prayed, thou has already answered. And we take delivery of our answers to prayer in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Amen. That eye condition has just been healed. That leg condition has just been healed. Every sickness has just been healed in Jesus name amen amen God bless you so much if you have any questions before you know you can see my eyes that I am being dozy so my eyes they are saying it's in the night you need to sleep but uh, <laughs> I will punish this eyes the more they say sleep the more say okay we are gonna stay here okay let me see if you have any questions let's see if we can receive any question okay let me read some comments uh from Eric Mateso Jambo all right bless day brother how you doing how you doing brother um bless your heart sir thank you teaching good sound doctor okay see comments god bless everybody yes 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 if you have any question you want to say something i'm just gonna give you this few five minutes to ask us and god bless you let me just wait for people i think they are typing uh -huh. Let's wait for the questions. For the question, you have any question? We are here. Let us hear your question. Mm -hmm. Let us hear your question. Bless the Lord. Amen. Let's hear your question. I bet people they are still typing question. You have any question? Let us know your question, and we are going to answer it right now. We just have five minutes to go. Five minutes. Your question. Any question you have? Let us know. Oh, my di kobe bele pro di babar. Li kamo si vaga di balata. Era baba so di gidaya. Na yengo di bate ki bola karona tayeka. Akuzam bele bro di kia balata. Gorobo shata manta te bele bos. Yakalo mohoga baka beka baka beka. Di bro do se di hedeus. Let me see your questions. If you have any questions, let us know. Let us type in the comment section below. Let's see your questions. Ah, notete, notete, kudibo, so debranetes. Ah, all right. Okay, I think, you know, I wish you to close. All right, good bro, Martins Nathaniel. Thank you so much, brother Martins Nathaniel. If you have any question, let's see. If you have any question, be free to ask, be free to ask. Be free to ask if you have any question. Be free to ask. Five minutes left. Four minutes now. Let's hear your questions. Let's hear your question. Uh, let's hear your question. Your question. You've been forgiven. Look where my chains are now. Death has no hold on me. So bless you. Let's see your questions. Your questions. Ah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Let's see your questions. We are waiting for your questions. Any question you have, just type it. Just type it. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. Alright, let me see. In the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing can stand the name. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. If you have any question, please ask, 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 ask. We are waiting for your question. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Questions, questions, load them up. 
Questions? I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child. Of God, oh, oh, oh. questions, questions, questions. Precious love has laid me forgiven. Pure as a murderer, powerful to make sin and shame retreat. God has made me whole, so I will rise and lift my hands, for by His mercy my life was spared. The highest name has set me free, because of Jesus my heart is clean. Because of Jesus, my heart is clean. You purified my heart in your presence. You teach me to discover the joy of holiness that forms as you drew me close. In you I was lost is a fun. So I have run and lift my hands, for by His mercy my life was spared. The highest name has set me free, because of Jesus my heart is clean. Brother Martin Nathaniel, we are children of light. We are happy with the end time we come across a man of light we know and happy thank Jesus I'm good for we but feed on the same food the doctrine of God. Thank you brother God bless you. Thank you so much God bless you God bless you so much Martins brother Martins Nathaniel thank you so much thank you so much well appreciated and we don't take you for granted. We don't take you this comment for granted. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I will rise and lift my hand. For by his mercy, my life was spared. The highest name has set me free. Because of Jesus, my heart is clean. Now I bet no questions. Let us just close. Father, we bless your name for everybody who has been here on the live broadcast. Lord, thank you, Lord, for everyone. Madiko di bagabango do kibata tala. Ariko zemendi kalabro di batata. Mandila ako zizaye. Rakuga sabila pradusha kata. Ehehe, nadula kago. <laughs> Akune tidi bango boroboshe Miakalo brodi balata Akurabanda Rusa sa si se sa sa <laughs> Nandukte pelebro nishiakadas Lord we thank you for everybody who's been here Watching us, following this live And sharing also We bless your name Lord We pray for one thing That Lord they may not cast uh, they may not cast the eyes of their understanding, being enlightened by the word of God. This word of God becomes a spark of ignition of the fire that is within to know the doctrine of God, to preach the gospel to the ends of the world. Lord, I thank you that everybody who is here is a form, is an able minister of the New Testament. 
And right now, Lord, we thank you that you are raising disciples all across the world, all across the globe. Major things are happening all across the world. And we thank you, Lord, that the places which are unpenetratable, they are being penetrated right now. The gospel shall reach into every place. Wherever the gospel has been broken from being re- from reaching there, the gospel shall reach there. And it is reaching there and shall explode as never seen before. Thank you, Father God. We bless your name. We honor you, Lord, for all the gifts that are bound to us freely, all that which you have received from Christ, all that what you have done for us, Lord. We thank you. We honor you. You are a good God. We love you, Father. Oh, we cry out, Abba, Father, and thank you, Lord, that you are our Father. We are born of your seeds. We are born of the word. We are what the word says. We are this week, Lord. We walk in power. We walk in miracles. We walk in the word. We stay aliko de brosha kalamata. Our eyes, they are fixated on Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless everybody who has been here. We bless God for your life. We bless everybody. Hey, hey, hey. Malakuba bala broche. Zanza zizo zononda. Laroga zambati kabalabas. Meyonani keroni dus. We see you another day. We feel like not closing. Bless the name of the living God. We feel not closing, but look, see you another day when you see us again. God bless you. Remember. The word of God has is not void of power. It is the power of God. So remember, live with this word of God, preach this word of God, speak this word of God regularly, every day, every moment. And God bless you so much. We we'll see you another day when we come live. We bless you. Signing out from Canada is Fabrice. Bless everybody.